Radio waves in particular have an effect upon biological systems that is often underestimated. Our human DNA has a resonance frequency of 150 megahertz. In this frequency range, even the slightest field strengths are enough to produce biophysical effects. They can cause mood changes and they trigger altered states of consciousness. Reference measurements have shown that the 150 megahertz high frequency wave in particular activates production of our own internal psychoactive substances. One gland in the brain in particular, the pineal gland, is one of the most powerful producers of such substances in the human body. The pineal gland is also hypersensitive when it comes to external magnetic fields and radio waves. It could, for example, act as an excellent transmitter and receiver of cosmic signals. In 1972, Nobel Prize winner Julius Axelrod discovered that the human pineal gland naturally produces one particularly potent psychoactive substance, originally called telepathine, due to its enhancement of psychic abilities. Dimethyltryptamine, or DMT. Some refer to it as the spirit molecule. One of the interesting things about DMT is it's actively transported into the brain uh, across the blood-brain barrier. It's as if, uh, you know, the brain requires DMT for normal function, which is a strange idea. DMT, you know, seems like a building block, you know, for our perception of everyday reality. If that's everyday reality, that just is in some future, um, like, apocalyptic time. It's almost as if, you know, we're all, you know, kind of living in apocalyptic time right now because it's being, you know, mediated by some, uh, you know, chemical substance, uh, which, you know, kind of is, you know, kind of holding things together. If you think about, you know, consciousness as uh, occurring within the brain, and if you think about, you know, the brain as uh, the organ of consciousness, um, I began to think about the prospect of DMT changing brain chemistry and then the uh, capacity of consciousness to experience other levels of reality than would occur. It was almost like the notion of a television receiver. Uh, you can change channels. Um, and, you know, some of the channels are everyday reality and other channels, uh, you know, seem to be specific, uh, you know, to the DMT experience. When you have a geomagnetic storm, you can get microstructural changes within the brain tissue itself. Now, if you change structure, you change function, which means the entire species, in fact, every living thing on this planet could be altered. The other important thing to remember is that how much of a change in the gene is required to alter the structure of the human brain? You realize you, a single point mutation, that's one small position, that DNA of that three billion base pairs that make up our genome. One small change, and you lose your ability for language. Now let's turn it around. Just suppose that famous event, whatever it was, when all cultures begin to use language more or less at the same time, was because of a point mutation that spread throughout our species. What would have done it? It had to be something that would have united all of us, something to which every human being was exposed. And that's the Earth's magnetic field. You look historically, you'll find that these massive global changes in what we call revitalization movements or revival movements or uh, feelings where there's massive movements of, a, of an idea often occur during periods of certain kinds of geomagnetic activity. Remember, for the human brain, it's not the amount, it's the quality. It's the pattern. Sooner or later, we will have a geomagnetic storm that has the appropriate pattern that will influence large portions of individuals who will see all kinds of things, perceive all kinds of phenomenon that are remarkably similar. Modern science tends to feel somewhat uncomfortable when you make the assumption that uh, all of us belong to the same species and we're all exposed to the same environment and that global changes could influence us all simultaneously and influence the direction of history. That takes away this sense of 
human control over their destiny. It's uh, an anxiogenic idea, anxiety producing idea to many people, but I think the data indicate that's probably correct. So it's conceivable then that an increase in our consciousness sparked by this kind of grand celestial event could provide us with a direct cognition of the hyper-real state of existence, 